welcome back to our science class. Congratulations for finishing the week 4. We are now on our quarter 2, week 5 with our pivot module. Happy New Year everyone! This lesson is intended for you to describe the plant reproductive system responsible for the process, specifically sexual reproduction. The different activities that you will encounter in this lesson will lead you to understand how different parts of the plants functions in producing their own kind. Reproductive system in plants. Like animals, plants are also capable of reproduction. They reproduce in many ways. In general, plants exhibit both sexual and asexual reproduction. New plants can be produced through seeds and different parts, for example, stem, leaves, roots, and etc. These are the reasons why you can see plants anywhere, especially in the forest where they get good physical condition. Plants have many ways on how to reproduce. Some of their parts are used to produce their own kind. Do you know of any plant in your community that grows another new young plant through their leaves or stalk? Malungay, this is the picture of malungay or the horse radish. It is a common plant found anywhere in the community. It has a lot of health benefits. Based on the different studies, its parts are used for medicinal purposes. Which part of the malungay plant is used to reproduce its kind? What part of plant seeds are developed? Now look at your surrounding. What do you think are the plants that show sexual reproduction? Flower is an accessory organ of the plants used in sexual reproduction. Flowers can be classified as complete and incomplete. A flower is said to be complete when it has both female and male reproductive parts. On the other hand, it is incomplete when it has only one reproductive part, either male or female. Most plants important to agriculture like corn, rice, wheat, and soybeans are flowering which means they, that they undergo sexual reproduction. Flowers are part that indicate a plant is producing seeds. When seeds are produced, it means the plant performs sexual reproduction. Different parts of the flower are involved to do such process. The dunkle, also called as pedicel, is the stalk of the flower that is important to hold the fruit. This is the example of the stalk of a flower. Receptacle is the thickened stem part attached to the peduncle and it is where the flower or group of flowers grows. Sepals encloses and protects the upper parts of the flower, especially when the flower is still a bud. Sepals are considered modified leaves which means they have a special function. A flower has always a collection of sepal called calyx. These are the parts of a flower. The petal, the petal, stigma, style, the pollen tube, the ovary, the ovule, the receptacle, the stem, the sepal that we are that we have mentioned and the stamen, the anther and filament. And later on we will discuss all of that. The most observable part of the flower in which people normally appreciate is the petal or petals. Petals normally have different colors depending on the type and species of plant. For instance, gumamela plants produce flowers in varying colors. Petals accommodate all insects for pollination. Some flowers have three petals while others have five or more petals. 
When petals are in group or by set, they are called corolla. This is an example of different colors of gumamela. To perform sexual reproduction, a flower has a stamen and this tail that serve as male and female reproductive organ respectively. Stamen is the male organ. It is composed of filament and the anther. So it's here, the pistil and the stamen. This is the stamen part enlarged in here. They are the male organ of the flower. The filament is hair-like structure that holds the anther, bringing the pollen grains to the position where it can be released effectively. The anther has two major lobes with pollen sacs that carries all the pollen. Pollen grains are released by the anther when they are already matured. This one, the anther produces, produces pollen and the filament, the stalk-like structure that attaches to the base of the flower, this one. On the other hand, pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. It is considered of several parts such as style and stigma. The style is an elongated part of the flower that supports and connects the stigma to the ovary. It extends to the height where the stigma can collect and drop pollen grains. The stigma, the one that receives the pollen grains, is a sticky and swollen structure at the tip of the style. The fluids that is secreted by the stigma enabling the pollen grains to mature continuously until they germinate. So this is the pistil part. Okay. If both pistil and stamen are present, the flower is considered complete or bisexual, like rose and gumamela. On the other hand, a flower with either stamen or pistil is considered as incomplete or unisexual, plus like papaya and cucumber reproduce or produce only unisexual flowers. This one is the cucumber and this one is the papaya and gumamela and rose that is considered as complete or bisexual plants and these two are unisexual sexual reproduction among plants happens through the transfer of pollen grains from the another anther into the stigma the anther serves as the male part while the stigma functions as the female part this process is called pollination, where are, there are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination happens when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the uh, anther or another flower in the same plant. This one is a self-pollination, so the number one is the pollen, number two is the stigma, and number three is the anther. The pollination of a flower by pollen from the same flower or from another flower to the same plant. And cross-pollination is a process that requires two individual plants of the same species. Self-pollination and cross-pollination are examples of pollen grain transfer to insects. When pollination is caused by wind and other non-living factors, it is called abiotic pollination. So this is an example of cross-pollination. Pollen, this is the pollen that is blown away to the other plant, to the stigma, and this is the anther. It occurs when pollen grains are transferred to a flower from different plants. 
Fertilization occurs when swallowing tube like pollen grains goes into the stigma through the style to reach the ovary. The process is completed at the moment the sperm is released from the tube to fertilize the egg cell in the ovule. Fertilized ovules get matured to develop into seeds. On the other hand, the ovary enlarges and develops to become the fruit. Ripening of a fruit a fruit signals that the seeds are already prepared to be planted and produce new plants. This is an example. The seedling. Sexual reproduction through po pollination is possible with the help of pollinators. So what are the pollinators? They are the agents for the transfer of pollen grains from a flower to another flower of either same plant or different plants of the same species. So we have your learning task. Please refer to your pivot for A modules for your learning task. Please like and share, comment, and subscribe for more video lessons. Thank you so much for listening. But wait, there is more!